brand new video in my micro bakery. It is 5.05 in the morning. Um, I've just started my working day. It is a bake day over here. Um, so I've got my sourdough on the go. I've got some cookies to shape. I've, I've got my morning buns proofing on top of the oven. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I've got sausage rolls to bake for a wholesale order and basically get everything ready by 7 a.m. for when deliveries start. So yeah, this is this is the busy rush hour. Um, but I thought today's video would be a recipe testing sort of video. So I've been commissioned to do another wedding cake, which is very, very lovely, very exciting for next June. Is it next June? Yeah, it's next June, 2024. Um, and the brief is for the cake to be 100% allergy friendly, so um, gluten free, dairy free, no nuts, no eggs. Um, and the couple have asked for it to be like a vanilla sponge with lemon icing. So I'm going to give it a go today for the first time. Um, and I'm gonna bring you guys along too because you might like to make a similar sort of cake for birthdays or for an upcoming wedding maybe I don't know um, but I thought that would be kind of fun to do together so yeah I'll check in later on Okay, so I'm gonna share a little bakery production hack with you guys. You may know it already, um, and it's super simple, but basically when I make a sausage, a batch of sausage rolls now, um, I make an enormous batch of about 60 to 70 sausage rolls, and it takes me best part of three to four days. I am trying to streamline the process a bit, but it is very, very time consuming. Anyway, what I do is I make a massive batch and then I freeze them all either in these bags or Tupperware boxes and the key is to put some greaseproof paper in between the layers so that they don't stick and they actually bake so much better from frozen so look at that a beauty I've also been working on um, making them bigger because my wholesale client wanted them bigger, which is fair enough. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and actually this is something that I learned from my baker friends, so they will do exactly the same thing. And what it does is it preserves all the layers, the lamination layers, and also it means that they last much longer stock-wise rather than just in the fridge. Um, so I thought that was super, super smart um, and I wanted to share that with you guys. I always do a little baby tester as well. So with each new batch, um, I try, I try it before it goes to the client too because you can't have bad sausage rolls going out then you guys. <laughs>
Good morning everyone. It is Wednesday morning now. Um, as usual, I didn't film for the rest of yesterday because I had quite a lot of admin to do, just like personal bits and bobs, and then I was also filing my tax return and I've done it and I'm super proud. Um, I've now been self-employed for how many years is it? Three years? Maybe a bit longer. Um, but every single time I always find it so daunting and it's just a massive learning curve doing these things and I'm sure if you guys are self-employed as well and you have to do your own taxes, um, it's just very, very overwhelming. But actually this time I did it all on my phone via the app and that way I found it so much more digestible and easy to kind of go through the steps rather than on a desktop computer or laptop. Um, so yeah, I mean, touch wood, I've done it all correctly, but yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things, isn't it, that you kind of wish they taught you in school. Um, I mean, I was never taught in school how to do my taxes. Um, but it's just something that you learn and like over the past two and a half years of running Lily's Loaf I've had meetings with several accountants actually because I was under the impression that I needed one just because everything was so new and I needed advice on a number of things like paying employees and getting them on the payroll and um, just so many things uh, like whether I should be a limited company or a sole trader and I was actually a limited company for some time um, just because I thought that was the natural thing to do if you're starting a food business but then actually I got advice from another accountant and they suggested that I shouldn't be because I'm too small to do that and you'd be yeah, just overcomplicating things. So then I dissolved Lily's Loaf Limited, um, and now I'm back to being a sole trader. But I think actually in the future, when I get my shop, um, I will probably take out a new company, like register as a new limited business, just in terms of like liability. Because if God forbid anything were to happen, um, and someone were to sue me, they would go after the business rather than me personally and my accounts, basically. Um, anyway, I don't know if that was all really boring, but these are all the things that you kind of have to deal with as a small business owner and just kind of plodding along through and learning as you go. Um, yeah, it is. It is incredibly daunting and overwhelming, but I feel like it does get a bit easier. I'm hoping. Um, and what I'd say to anyone who's in a similar boat is just get as much advice as possible from professionals, from accountants, if you know an accountant, like family or friends, or if there's someone in your local area. Just get as much advice as possible from a range of people on these things um, because actually for me it would cost so much money to hire an accountant to do the the tax return for me and actually after doing it yesterday again it wasn't so bad um, so yeah anyway um, today I have got some prep to do for some wholesale orders um, I have also got the wedding cake to prep sorry I've got the wedding cake to test so as I mentioned in the video yesterday I've been commissioned to do a wedding next year so long long time away but I like to get the samples out to the couple as early as possible um, and just see where we're at because it's another gluten-free um, plant-based nut-free cake um, but I've never tried this flavor before so I'm intrigued to see how it all turns out um, and also just another update in terms of premises so sadly the one that i shared with you guys a couple weeks ago 
So it was up for rent, which is obviously what I was going for. And it was also up for sale. And on the same morning that I put in my proposal, somebody else bought it because it was a shop and it was two flats above as well. So yeah, it just goes to show like you can't get too attached to these things because they're not really yours until they're yours at the final stage. And there's so many variables involved um, and yeah it, I just want to reiterate um, that it's a really long journey and I'm still like I'm back to square one which is okay I was disappointed after it but yeah I mean every single time I'm learning more and more about this game and I've got more under my belt for the next time so yeah Anyway, um, I've got to get cracking with this prep and um, then we'll make the cake together in a bit. guys so it's a bit later on now and um, I've baked the cakes they're just cooling well I think they're almost cool now let me just see yeah yeah so the cakes are baked and they're looking really good and they smell lovely too so that's them there they're kind of thin but actually I'm quite happy with that and potentially for the wedding I might double the recipe so that I've got four layers but I have just only quoted two layers to the couple and I wanted to show you as well my proposal that I sent to them. Um, I'll pop it up on the screen here but I was just referring to it to see the kind of visual display that I had intended for them. So because I was thinking they're actually quite beautiful by themselves, I thought well I could just leave the sides bare. Um, and then have icing in the middle and then on the top kind of like a classic Victoria sponge but because it's more of a special occasion and because actually I prefer a cake which has icing all around the edge in the middle and the top as well so you get like more than enough icing um, I think I'm actually gonna go around the entire edge so yeah in my proposal I suggested flowers pressed flowers around the edge um, and yeah I'm just figuring out the best way to do the icing because I did think I could make one with aquafaba so that would be more kind of like royal icing um, but then I was thinking oh maybe buttercream but then I think the buttercream will be too sweet um, and a bit too overpowering so I'm thinking maybe using aquafaba with a little lemon zest and yeah just whipping it up and then it will also set really nicely for the kind of icing that I want so I think I'm gonna do that right now um, but yeah how beautiful does that look smells so nice it smells absolutely delightful so yeah again would highly highly recommend <laughs> 